King County Library System, or KCLS, is one of the busiest library systems in the country, with 49 libraries and communities throughout King County. Last year, King County residents checked out nearly 21 million items from the library system, including almost 4 million digital ebooks and audiobooks. Today, we're at the Tuckwilla Library, a new building about 20 minutes south of Seattle on Tuckwilla International Boulevard. It serves one of the most diverse communities in the country. Students here collectively speak more than 80 different languages. Hi everybody, today we're joined by Lisa Rosenblum. She is the brand new director as of 2017. 2018. 2018. <laughs> January of 2018. You're even newer than I thought. I this is new. great, that's great. You came from one of the very busy, in fact, one of the busiest library systems in the country, Brooklyn. That's correct. And you're coming to a companion library, another busiest library system in the country. What brought you here? Well, um, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. I guess I just love busy. I love big systems. And it always amazes me that the residents of King County don't realize what a great library system they have nationally. Uh, King County Library System is known to be a national leader in uh, library services. We have beautiful buildings, um, as this building we're in today, the Tuckwilla Library, is one of the prettiest libraries I think we have, one of our newest construction projects, and um, also for the great support that our community uh, provides to us. So it's just a great library system. And you're stepping in at a time when, when the projects, all of them are pretty much done, thanks to a bond issue passed by King County voters. So there are new libraries or redone libraries, just beautiful things all over the county. One of the nice things that, um, that we did here, I take no credit for it, but it's, it's, a, it's wonderful that we made sure when we either built a new library or we remodeled them, that they had a consistent look to them. So you know when you're coming into a King County Library, there's consistent signage, uh, layout, um, and of course, we have a beautiful books in all of our libraries. So um, even though every library is different, there's also a sameness to them. And that was very clever on the part of, of our staff to do that, I think. And we had some great architects. So we have these beautiful buildings. Your job is to make them work. <laughs> what kinds of initiatives are ahead for all of us? Well, the biggest initiative we have, eventually we need to go back to our voters. Uh, we have a levy that we passed in 2010 and we're at the uh, sunsetting of the, the uh, levy and we need to go back to ask our voters for a levy lift eventually. We don't quite know when that's going to be, um, but overall my job is, is outward. My job is to go out and meet with community leaders, with electeds, uh, the, and just connect with them, talk about the value that they get f from the library, and also push the library forward to the next level. What's the next level? If you talk about pushing it forward and initiatives, what are they? What do they look like for me as a library user? Well, we're always going to be about literacy and books, but books now have taken a different form. Um, they're either print books, which I grew up with, and one of the places we can never stop having print books are for children because tactically children need to be able to pick up a book, look at it, um, have story time. So the traditional things everybody knows about libraries, we will continue to do. We might have books in a digital format, but we're still going to have books. But the next level is that libraries are becoming, we, we call it transactional, where we used to measure how many books that we check out. And that's still an important measure, especially for us since we're one of the top circuits circ in the country. Right. So we, we like that measure. But we're also about community and community space. And what we're finding is across the country and um, is that our libraries are used for people to gather. Sometimes people come in and they just want to be on our computers because they don't have a computer at home or their, their bandwidth is so slow. And we have really great Wi-Fi here. We have great bandwidth. So that's one thing we do. As you, as you know, you cannot get a job. You cannot succeed in society anymore without having computer access. So that's one of the things we do. We're going to be um, uh, expanding more of our community events and um, having us be a, a space where people can um, have, pro uh, we're going to have spaces where people can talk about issues in the community. 
We've always done that, but we're going to escalate that and be more about what our, each of our community needs. So for instance, let's say in Tukwila, there is a community issue that people want to discuss. Let's say it's about housing, the cost of housing. Um, we're a convener. Libraries become conveners, so we open up our community space. We either lead the meeting or we get the parties together to talk about these issues. And it's funny because um, all things come around. Libraries have always been about the discussion and the reading of ideas and talking about it. And we're just continuing that into the 21st century. And that looks very different than it did 60, 70, 80 years ago. Not that either one of us was around then, <laughs> but, but you know, we see it in films, we read about it in books, what have you, that they were a place where, shh, you know, be quiet. Not that way anymore. Well, we sort of turned the model around because we do have, like, in this library, you'll see there's a quiet room. So most of our library is noisy. I mean, people talk. We don't shush people anymore. But we also offer spaces where people can have a quiet experience. Every one of our libraries now has a quiet room, and people do use them. Um, I love it when children come in here and they're noisy and they're doing story time because they're engaged. And after school, especially here in Tukwila, we get tons of uh, youth coming in. And it's a noisy space at after 3 o'clock, but we want these kids in here. We want these teenagers in our libraries, off the streets with a safe, productive place to be. They do their homework. They gather together. Um, that's an important role for our libraries. But we also offer, for those of you who do not like a noisy experience, a place where you can have a quiet space to read or write. Uh, do your report, whatever you want to do. This county, King County, and the rest of the country are becoming more diverse, it seems, almost by the day. What about library audiences? Are they reflecting that? Absolutely. Libraries reflect and should reflect the communities where they're located. And so just on a very basic level, for instance, when we have a community coming in that speaks a different language, um, we make sure we buy collections in that language. Uh, when we um, let's say there's a, a large Chinese community uh, in, in one of our branches, we'll offer a story time in Chinese or in Russian or where, wherever. Um, we still offer the other stuff too, but um, I often say that a library for our new immigrants and for, uh, is, is, is the first place that people meet uh, government in the sense that we are um, a quasi-government funded agency and people are comfortable here. So we can say to them, instead of them being going to City Hall and being kind of intimidated, we have voter registrations here. We have driver's license applications here. We have all of the things that somebody will need to do to succeed in, in local society, but we do it in a, in a nice, accessible way. So while you're here talking about how do I get a driver's license, your kids are reading books. And that's a really important thing, for, especially for our, our diverse population. Some people are coming from places in the world where they don't have public libraries. They don't understand what a public library is. And they are thrilled when they come here. And they can take out books for free. And they'll often say, you mean I can take this home? Oh, yes, you can take this home. We don't charge you. Just bring it back on time. And um, so that's, that's one of the really positive things that libraries provide. So 49 branches. That's a lot. Yes. Where does that fit in terms of the country, or do you, do you know? It's big. Yeah. Um, in Brooklyn, I had 60, but it was in a, a more compact urban environment. Here, there's a lot of miles between libraries. Uh, I'm, I'm driving a lot. I'm sure you found this out, yeah. <laughs> Which I'm enjoying. It's a beautiful part of the country. But uh, it's, it's considered a, a, a fairly big system, and certainly because of our circulation, both, both digital and print, we are one of the top circulating libraries in the country. And it's all to the readers here, I owe it, and also to our selection. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Well, thank you for inviting me, and um, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And we're here today with one of the librarians who knows this digital stuff. <laughs> You mind my using digital stuff? I like digital stuff. Angela and Nolette, thank you so much for being with us. It's great to have you. Oh, very happy to be here. So talk about the digital stuff. King County Library System, actually across the country, is pretty famous for its 
our digital use. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yes, we are. So uh, we had a stellar year in 2017. So mm -hmm. King County Library System had m almost four million checkouts of our eBooks and downloadable audiobooks, which is just amazing when you think about it. And so this means that we had the most digital checkouts in the entire country. Now, now to put that into perspective, mm -hmm. our dear friends and neighbors across the way at the Seattle Public Library, uh, they are considered to be the most well-read city in America according to Amazon. So the fact that uh, despite having such fantastic neighbors next door, that we were also able to check out just a little bit more uh, was incredibly exciting for us. So that's kind of why we call ourselves King County Reads, because mm -hmm. we do. Tell us, me and lots of those folks out there, when you talk about digital and libraries, what do you mean? Oh, we mean so many things. Uh, I was actually just out at Bellevue Transit Station last year talking about all the different things that King County offers that a lot of people don't realize. So I would go up to the library, uh, I would go up to people and I would say, hey, you know, I'm from the library, I'm here to talk about all the great stuff. And they're like, oh, the library, uh, I know what the library has. And I'm like, really? Did, did you know that we offer uh, streaming TVs, movies? And they're like, oh, oh no, no, I, I didn't know that. I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, so we've expanded so much more than just, you know, ebooks and downloadable audiobooks, which is what people usually think about, but really to encapsulate this whole streaming concept of movies, TV shows, music, um, videos. So just, just so much uh, all happens online, wherever you are, 24 seven, from Mexico, if you're having a lovely tropical vacation, uh, just anywhere you happen to be. That, and so I can do this from home. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> me too. Uh, what are people reading? from home, is it you find it the same experience as folks going to the library or if I'm online, I'm looking for something entirely different or a mix? Excellent question. So one of the things that we're always amazed by is uh, romance novels are one of our top genres that check out online. And one of the thoughts behind that is, you know, you've got people who, well, maybe they would be a little embarrassed to like walk up to our circulation desk and, you know, check out their stack of romance novels. But, you know, there's less of a stigma if somebody's like, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy that historical romance and I'm going to discreetly read it, you know, on my phone. I'm going to listen to it in the car. It kind of takes a little bit of that stigma off from people who maybe would be a little reluctant to check them out uh, in the print form. Mm -hmm. The technology world is not new to you, is it? No, no, it's not. Tell that wonderful story. Okay, um, I grew up in the Seattle area. Uh, my father was working in one of these local technology companies back in the 80s, uh, and so technology was just a part of our life. I was the first kid who went to elementary school and told my teacher, oh, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to write my homework up when I get home on the computer, and this was, this was the first time it had happened. Um, and so the, my teachers called and they were like, she's not doing her homework in class. You know, we, we have a problem. Uh, and my parents were like, no, it's, it's fine. She'll type it up when she gets home. Uh, and so we were the first family that did that. Uh, so technology's always been of interest to me. Uh, back in 2008 or 2007, uh, King County did this great program called Library 2.0. And it was thinking about, you know, how does technology relate to the library? And as a follow-up, to that they created a new position which was going to be kind of an advocate somebody just to think about like you know how do these two uh, worlds intersect and it was a position I applied for and I picked it up so in addition to my children's librarian duties at the time I also started really thinking about technology and that role kind of grew and grew and grew until uh, about eight years ago or so uh, I made that transition to leave children's services and be in technology full time. So dream a little bit with me. Let's go out five, 10 years from now. What will digital look like? Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a hard question, Terry. Uh, see, I follow the excellent with the hard. Your turn. I think in the future, I think we're still gonna see this nice mix of people who come to our libraries. They're, they're community gathering places. They're spots where we can do more than just read. We, we can learn new skills. So like for example, King County Library System has a new maker space opening at our Bellevue Library. Uh, this is gonna be a chance for us to have 
sessions where people can learn new technologies, they can, you know, maybe grow their personal business skills with classes being provided, um, or they can just engage with other people who are kind of like like-minded and learning those new technologies. So some really exciting stuff is going to continue to happen in our buildings, absolutely. Uh, but I also think, you know, having that access to that technology wherever you are is going to continue to be important, especially with our younger millennial generations and youngers who are coming up and just absolutely used to that technology being around them 24 seven. You know, unless I can provide that access to them wherever they are, maybe they won't be quite as interested in coming into our branches. So I think it really is that handshake between, you know, making sure they have access to the right things at the right time and growing their skills as lifelong learners in our community buildings. And you're having fun doing this. Oh, I love my job, I have the best job. That's great. Thank you for being with us. Absolutely. It's great to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Tuckwilla Library was designed by Perkins and Will with many sustainable elements. In fact, it was selected as a finalist for a 2018 Sustainability Leadership Award by Sustainable Seattle. This beautiful building includes regionally sourced wood throughout its interior. Large windows fill the space with plenty of natural light and outside, native plants are used for landscaping. It also has a green roof made up of drought tolerant plants that will help regulate the building temperature while preventing stormwater runoff. There are inspiring art pieces, including a sculpture by local artist John Fleming. The library offers improved technology, including free public Wi-Fi inside and out, and computers for community members. This branch, Tuckwilla, is famous for it in the library circles in King County, isn't it? Yes, it is. We recently were nominated for the Seattle Sustainability Award. We were one of five that uh, were nominated for that. And some of the features of this building that acknowledge that were the fact we have a, a green roof on here that takes care of 60% of the stormwater runoff. So that helps with the vegetation around the building. We also have a lot of natural native plants around the exterior of the building, which help prolong the life of the building. The interior we have, uh, everything we use is uh, like our carpet, for example, is recyclable carpet, 100% recyclable material. And then underneath this floor is a um, tubes that run through the floor for the heating and cooling. So mm -hmm. it heats up the whole slab. It's a cement slab mm -hmm. and the floor will heat up. So the benefit of a ground loop system is you're already dealing, you're already at a starting point of 52 degrees. So you're circulating that. So you're just having to heat those coils in the slab up from 52 to 70. So that's where your energy savings comes in. In my parlance, I could wear my booties to the library in the morning and my feet will be just toasty, right? You could do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We use low energy lighting systems, LED lights mm -hmm. that produce low energy. We have a lot of daylight, a lot of natural daylight that comes in the building. Uh, if you're outside, you can look in, you know, you can see what's going on in the library as well as in the library. You have, uh, you know, you get all that natural light that's coming in that uh, allows you to read the books better and see inside the building. And, and plus you don't have to have the lights on quite as much because the light just comes in from natural daylight. Well, which is a little important in the Pacific Northwest, at least in Western Washington. Mm -hmm. It's bright in here, very bright. A part of that brightness comes from the fact we have uh, skylights in the building. And the skylights are also operable to where we can bring in some natural uh, ventilation to help with the, for patrons to have a better experience in the library. So different things in the building that will all come together to help make a sustainable building. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lisa Rosenblum, and I'm your new director of the King County Library System. I wanted to share something that I just discovered. When I first got here, I asked my staff, you know, I love to read because I'm a librarian. What are the top 10 books a newcomer to King County should be reading? And they created an amazing list for me that you can find on our website. So go check it out. Mm -hmm.